And the question is not if it will erupt, but how and when. We may not be able to prevent an eruption, but when the molten rock begins to move up toward the surface, will all the scientific data warn us in time? The first indications of a Yellowstone eruption will be rumblings heard underfoot as dozens of small earthquakes begin. The ground begins to rise from the pressure of the expanding hot waters, gases, and surging magma. Throughout the park, new cracks in the ground release huge geysers spouting superheated water hundreds of feet into the air. Lava first appears oozing out of cracks in the surface. Then, steam and ash explode hundreds of feet into the air. But instead of this relieving the pressure, it pushes the volcano over the edge. From five miles below the surface, molten rock heated to 1,200 degrees bursts into the air. Like a hurricane of ash, pyroclastic flows rip along the ground at 100 miles per hour. For those who left the park within the past half hour, their luck has run out. 50 miles away, if they know anything about Yellowstone's past, they'll know they have little time before their city is devastated. Then, a second eruption begins on the other side of the caldera. Then another. It is no longer a simple volcanic eruption, like it did hundreds of thousands of years ago. The giant cauldron of magma spews a million tons of melted rock thousands of feet into the air as several volcanoes continue to erupt. With so little warning, nearly 400,000 people are at risk. And it gets worse. The material falls back onto the surface of the earth. A brilliant summer afternoon begins to look like a blustery snowy night. The weight of the falling ash collapses roofs across the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Utah, killing thousands, while a cloud of lighter ash, a thousand times larger than the one produced by Mount St. Helens, drifts eastward with the wind. There's so much ash put into the atmosphere, and it gets distributed so globally that it would cause disruption to air traffic, not just near the scene of the eruption, but really globally for a period of time. And then, the deadliest part of the Yellowstone eruption begins. There's lots of ways you can die in a pyroclastic eruption. And one way is to inhale the stuff and inhale these sh sharp uh, pieces of glass. They attack the lungs, they attack the bones, they kill you from the inside. Across the country, masks are supplied to protect people against the ash. But farm animals have no protection. Within weeks, vast numbers of the country's livestock die, like the animals that roamed the Nebraska Plains 12 million years before. And volcanic ash covers much of the Midwest's farmland. You can't grow anything in that ash. Fresh volcanic ash is sterile, like Mount St. Helens just after the eruption. And so it wipes out the breadbasket of, of the world, breadbasket of Canada. So where does food come from in the meantime? I don't know. And the effects could last for years. Millions of people could die from starvation. Countless more would suffer as the ash cloud drifts across the globe, dramatically changing our climate. Ash particles would remain in the atmosphere for six years, radically cooling the planet. It could mean snow in June, frost in August, and the killing off of crops for years to come. Imagine six years without a growing season. It may not happen for thousands of years, but one day history will repeat itself. The slumber of the Yellowstone caldera will end, and the planet will face potential catastrophe. Hopefully by then we'll be prepared, but if not, 
it could be one of nature's greatest mega-disasters.